a spine-tingling wander through a terrifying, rusty old Russian prison. This may be my favorite place on Earth. I can't believe it hasn't been condemned yet. Hi, I'm Jeremy. Thanks for watching. Today turned out to be an amazing day, but we'll get to that. First, after complaining yesterday that my blood sugars are always regular or high, never low, I woke up and was 58 today. Maceo and I went downstairs for our breakfast buffet, and don't worry, we were the only two people on the elevator, and I ate for a little while without taking insulin yet. Of course, I waited too long, and halfway through the meal, my blood sugar was 278. Whoops! So much for a perfect diabetes day. Today, Tallinn was sunny and beautiful, but cold, minus two degrees. The puddles were ice, and we had a fun destination. On the edge of Tallinn, right on the Baltic Sea, is this old Russian prison called Patare. It was closing for the season any day. We weren't sure if it was going to be open, but we decided to walk to it and check it out. We took advantage of a playground, then we found ourselves in a Russian market. Here you could buy food and things like calendars and flashlights and gadgets and pigeons. I'm not sure the pigeons were for sale. Maybe if you bargain. I've been traveling with no phone and no watch, so I never know what time it is. So I bought a very cool watch. It cost five euros. I also wanted these little warming shoe pads. And after a lot of dramatic hemming and hawing and bargaining, I talked the lady into throwing them in for free with the watch. We were still full from breakfast, so we bought these small pastries from a train station nearby. And then we continued walking through this little residential part of Tallinn. I stopped, and although my fingers were so cold I could barely do it, I managed to check my blood sugar outside this building, and it was 96. I took a shot right there through my Bluffworks pants, ate the pastry, and we continued on towards Patare. Lucky for us, it was still open, by which I mean the little trailer out front still had somebody in it taking the very small amount of money it takes to get in. Paterep was a Russian prison that was decommissioned or abandoned about 2004. A lot of it seems to have been left just as it was, but a bunch of the rooms have been transformed by local artists. There are no guides, almost no signs, there's no maps. You just go in and everything is out of context nothing is explained and all you do is just look at everything and take it all in. Our whole time at Patare we only saw a couple of other small groups of people. Basically we had the place all to ourselves and it's room after room after room. Some of the rooms have their original objects arranged kind of artfully. Others have complete more complex art installations in them. Some don't seem to have had anything done to them, just piles of garbage, paint peeling on the walls, or rusty old beds left just as they were. Some of the things are simple, some of them are complex, all of them are riveting. It's certainly not heated, so it was cold. That added a lot to the atmosphere. And the more we saw, the stranger it got. Some of the rooms were locked and there was a peephole on the door. And you could see inside and you wondered, why is this room locked, but another room isn't? One room had dozens of colorful condoms hanging from strings on the ceiling. I was fascinated by all this. Masayo was, well, a tad uneasy. I'm not sure how safe any of the stuff in Patare prison is, but I do know that in the medical section, you probably shouldn't touch anything. Although I wonder what it would be like to take insulin with one of these. Outside are some exercise yards. According to sketchy information on the internet, prisoners could go outside for about an hour a week. Now it's just cold, rust, and overgrowth. But you're allowed to walk all over any of it you want to. There's not a lot I can do to describe Patare. It's gloomy and horrifying, but vibrant. It's an endlessly photographic place, and the pictures do far more than I could to describe it.
And so, transformed, Masao and I walked back to Old Town, a bit disoriented. What did we just see? Where are we? What year is it? What a day. We stopped in at a place that had probably the best coffee in Old Town. It was a cozy little place. I looked through their records. It was a strange mix. Beethoven, Bob Dylan, Bon Jovi, Madonna. The owner said she'd been to Scotland and records were really cheap there, but unfortunately in Estonia, they're really expensive. We saw yet more Old Town weirdness and then went back to the hotel where my blood sugar after Patere was 143. I'll take it. Dinner was at another cool but non-Estonian place. It's an Azerbaijani restaurant whose name is Shesh Besh. I don't know anything about Azerbaijan, but we asked the waitress what the name meant. She said it means 6-5, and she showed us a pair of dice to explain it. I got a bunch of meat and rice and took a wild guess at the Humalog shot. Back in the room I had a donut for dessert, but I didn't take any extra insulin for it because of all the walking we'd done today. Will. I. Ever. Learn. At 11 p.m. Surprise! It was 274. I took two units of insulin and an hour later was down to 219 and said, ah, good enough. Time for bed. Good thing and the bad thing about today. The good thing, of course, was that Patere Prison was still open, that we were the only ones there, and that it was such a unique place. The bad thing is that I had way too many high blood sugar readings, but who cares? It's Patere Day. Diabetes thoughts for today. Of course, there were too many highs today. The average blood sugar all day was 178. I've got to get over this thing where I don't take enough Humalog, or any Humalog, for a donut. I don't understand that. It's a psychological thing where I just keep worrying that walking is going to be so much exercise that my blood sugar gets low. But we're not doing this kind of strenuous, like, 12-hour walking. We're just strolling around town. It doesn't have the effect I'm imagining. The bright spots is that my highs are usually in the 200s. There haven't been too many 300 readings. But, uh, wait till tomorrow. Today was a stupendous last day in Tallinn, Estonia. But there's no time to rest. Tomorrow we are catching a morning bus that will take us further away from the Baltic Sea and deeper into the heart of Estonia. 